Hey, how's it going, everyone? Brad Smith here with the Relationship Marketing Podcast. I'm joined with Hannah, my co-host. I hope everyone's doing well today. Hannah, what are we talking about? Today, we are talking about the Million Dollar Marketing Funnel. So to kind of get started and lay the foundation, Brad, could you define what a sales funnel is and how, kind of how it works? Yeah, we'll be reviewing a sales funnel for business to businesses and also a sales funnel for e-commerce businesses where you sell things to consumers. Really, when you think of the sales funnel, we'll try to simplify it as much as we can today and walk through each stage. But it is, it's multiple stages of your customer journey where your customers find you, how they interact, how you build a relationship with them, how you sell and when they buy, all the way to how you get reviews and uh, referrals from it. So it's really from somebody finding you, building a relationship with them, and then buying. That's a sales funnel from the start to the end, thinking of your customers. We do a right. lot of sales funnels, Hannah, for our clients with automation links. You know, we work with what, what type of businesses do we work with? I mean, we work, I mean, technically we work with both B2B and B2C, yeah. but we work with a wide range from lawyers to interior design. So it's really cool to kind of put ourselves into each business and you learn so much when you're helping them because at first glance, a sales funnel might seem daunting to some people. Um, complicated. So I'm really excited to break it down here today and make it not so scary. And by the way, in the description or in the comments below, if you guys could just comment, um, you know, sales funnel or I want it, we have a checklist where it's a free guide showing you the breakdown of the sales funnel. And we have multiple clients that have made millions of dollars from this. And a lot of times people think, hey, if I just make a website and I do some social media posts, I'm going to get sales. Well, in all reality, you need the, the full system. And what I've always coached is you never build your house on a weak foundation. You never build your house on sand. You don't just put up a, a garage and everything's good. You have to build your business on a strong foundation. You have to have those systems in place to really follow up with people. Right. Yeah. You have to establish a strong customer journey and have it set up perfectly so you don't run into trouble later down the line. Exactly. So I think we, let's get into maybe, you know, why it's important. Um, I think, you know, for me, I know that, like I just mentioned, you can't just build a website and think people are going to come. I think the follow-up is always the most important. Back in the day, they used to say you had to follow up with somebody, you know, seven times before they made a purchase. Nowadays, I think it's even more. But So where is the start of the sales funnel? Like, what brings people in to your business in the first place? That's what I, I think we should cover first. Yeah, definitely. I think that the first portion of the sales funnel would be a landing page or a lead magnet. And this is where you give your best offer to your customers or potential customers and in order to get their email so you can retarget them through there and build that relationship. And, you know, a lot of people think, you know, oh, I'm going to get email subscribers on my website. But, you know, really, when you think about your website, it's a branding play. Um, people go there to see who you are, what you offer, make sure you look trustworthy, make sure you have a legitimate business, but you're not really gathering their lead information. You're not, picks, you know, putting the pixel on them most of the time. You really need to be getting that email address. So we always recommend a landing page or lead magnet. Um, just like us, we said, hey, we have a million dollar sales funnel that we'll give you as an example. Of course, give us your email in exchange. We'll give you our best offer, our best product. So same thing. What's your best thing that you can give away for free in exchange for that email address, which then leads to that second stage of the sales funnel, which is really key. Let's get somebody interested and give them something of value so we can build that relationship. Right. And something I found is um, sometimes landing pages and websites are confused. People think that a landing page is a website, mm -hmm. um, but it isn't. Like you said, it has to be customer centric. You have to think of a pain point that they may have, give your best solution in order to get their email, and then you go from there. But 
it's supposed to be a short page with just short and simple with a form and yeah i always like to say you should think of all of your customers when they come to your website as they're sitting at a red light on their phone because that, mm -hmm. that's most of the time. Most people are on their phones and probably texting and driving. So how can you get something in exchange for them before the light turns green? Because that's what's going to happen. They're going to stay on your page for just a couple seconds. So if you have all your menus even at the top, they might get lost and go to the about page and go to the, I think the pricing page is usually the most visited page on a website. So the last thing you want them doing is coming to your landing page and going to your pricing page right away. And then the light turns green. So usually we recommend hiding the menu and hiding your footer and just limiting your lead magnet or landing page to just three sections. Here's what we're going to offer you. Here's a form to fill out. And that's it. You know, if, if you don't like it, lights turning green onto the next one. But um, yeah, keep it super, super short and don't let people get lost. Yeah, you don't. Sometimes if I go on a website and it's just all this information on it, it's overwhelming. So on a landing page, you know, a website is fine to, you know, put the about us and all that to help, like you said, build the trust. But a landing page, you definitely don't want them to forget about you when the light turns green. Yeah, that's, yep. <laughs> and that a lot of times people will make the, and that comes into our next question that and topic is how can we improve the conversion rates? So if you put up a landing page and people just aren't filling out the form, it means you're probably not giving them a good offer or your copywriting is wrong. So when somebody comes to the page, one quick recommendation is acknowledge their pain point at the top. If you're a health and fitness company, your main headline should say, fill out this form to so I can help you lose weight for a free guide to lose weight. If you are a hair salon, the very first headline should be, we provide the best, you know, we're the best hair salon in this city. Fill out the form for a 10% coupon code. If you're e-commerce, you know, hey, we have the highest quality products made in the U.S., fill out the form to get 20% coupon code. So that's really key to help um, increasing the conversion rates. Definitely. And I feel like, you know, working, us working on automation links and our clients, you notice a lot of them tend to say like hair salon in this location, which is so good because when you really look at like the stats of a website, you can see that people are searching up simple things like hair salon in New York City. And you want to make sure that you're showing up for those things. So yeah, like you said, putting it up at the top, the pain point, even if it doesn't look super pretty, just making it simple and to the point. Yep. Test, test, test. So our, our next question we, I want to cover are what are the key stages? What are some other stages of the sales funnel? So we know we need a lead magnet or a landing page. We know we need to get their email addresses. Then what? How do we follow up with them? You know that from the lead magnet, we're going to get emails. So we're going to retarget there. Um, like you said, you should touch the client like seven times to build that relationship. And yep. social media can be very powerful as well for retargeting. Um, what else would you say? I think one thing that's been really powerful for us is after somebody, because really, if you think about it, they don't know you yet. It's probably a new visitor. There's three stages of the sales funnel, a brand new visitor that's never heard of you, somebody that gets to know you, and then somebody that really knows you. That's a warm lead. So I like to give like, we call it a thank you page after they give the lead magnet. And I always like to have a video on that page. That way they can start seeing who you are, building some sort of relationship with you, see your face, um, almost feel like they get to know you just like we make our videos, our podcasts on YouTube as well. So people can see who we are, see that we're authentic and that we care. So not only are they going to get our emails, they've also hopefully watched a video from us. And then we always ask them to follow us on social media as well. So wherever you're the most active or trusted at on social media, you should always invite them to, Hey, join our Facebook group or follow us on LinkedIn. So now they start seeing you everywhere. They saw your video. They get your emails and they see your posts on social media. That's starting to build trust, showing that you're an authority. And now when they're ready to finally ready to buy, whether it's today, tomorrow, next week, next month, I've even had customers come back and buy from me three years later after coming in from my landing page because they never forget. But when they're ready, they remember and they come back. And that's really the key in those 
those steps is making sure you're omnipresent there after they come in from the lead magnet. Right. And, you know, something I do, you made some great points. Some things I want to touch on is with the emails, um, those are strategic. So could you tell us a little bit of the strategy behind that? Yeah, the emails need to be, as you know, we have, a, by the way, on our website, we have a free email template that gets the highest open rates, clicks and sales ever. So you guys feel free to go grab that. Hannah, if you could put that in the description, that'd be great. But the emails need to, quick actions, follow me on LinkedIn. Um, click this link to watch one of our YouTube videos or this resource, go download this next resource that's even more valuable. So what you can do is keep providing value to them past that lead magnet through emails. And now they're like, wow, every email I get from this company or this business is of value, is helping me, is educating me, is so now I'm totally going to come back and buy from them because they're providing so much value. So value when you write your email is more important than a newsletter, a sale, or a promo that you'd send through MailChimp. So you need to make those emails just personal and high value. That's really key. I agree. I mean, as pretty as some of those emails can get from certain companies, it does, they always end up going to my spam folder. Again, like the landing page, it's too, it's too much to look at. Yep. It's overwhelming. And yeah, so I'll usually just, if I was at a, a red light and it turned, I would close it out before it turned green. I'm out of here. So remember that guys. <laughs> Simple and valuable. That's really the key in emails. I mean, you can make your email look as cool as you want, but if no one ever sees it, what's the point? You just wasted your time. Exactly. Think smarter, not harder. That's right. <laughs> so I know we uh, um, we try to keep these uh, videos and podcasts, you know, short to the point, provide as much value to you. We have just two more things that, I, you know, we wanted to cover today. What's next on our list so we can help, you know, people with their business with this, Hannah? Yeah, so when we talk about like all these tools, like email marketing, um, what platforms or tools would you recommend using to manage all of this? So there's multiple ways, depending on your business. If you're e-commerce, maybe you're on Shopify. My favorite is really Clavio. They integrate with Shopify. They send abandoned cart emails um, and you can make them personal, simple, to the point, and they have great analytics and stats for your tracking. If you are a local business or an online business, an entrepreneur, you know, my favorite is Nutshell. Um, there's software like HubSpot, Active Campaign, MailerLite, you know, depending on how much you want to spend and where you're at. If you're just starting out, start with MailerLite. It'll help you send out simple emails, automation emails, and newsletters. But I always recommend getting a CRM, Customer Relationship Manager. So you can follow up, not just in masses, but also personal follow-ups, have people schedule with you on your calendar. Um, and also you want to look at affordability. HubSpot's probably the best, but they're also the most expensive. So depending on where your business is, you know, we'll post our affiliate links down below on our recommendations. I think most are favorite to our least favorite, and you can see those there and just choose from yourself based on you know, recommendations and pricing. But Nutshell is my favorite just because it has everything all in one and allows you to follow up with every lead. Don't forget to follow up with leads. That's that's the yeah. point here, right? The only, the only way to do that efficiently is to automate your marketing. It's so seamless. And I do love Nutshell as well. But I do agree that, you know, mailer light is, I would say, very user-friendly, especially when I first started. So I think that's a great place to start for those who are wondering. Exactly. And the last thing we wanted to cover was, all right, your system's in place. You got your sales funnel. You Hopefully you have a couple automated emails, maybe just one. And hey, if you want to do personal one-to-one -one emails, if you're just starting out, that's fine also. You have them following you on social media. Hopefully you have a personal video on your thank you page. Got a great lead magnet that's getting leads turning into visitor or visitors turning into leads easily. Where the heck do you market this? Like, how do you get people to the landing page in the first place? And that's actually going all the way back. I always say, build your system first before you start marketing. And I would say this last part's one of the hardest parts if you do it wrong, but if you do it right, you can see some great results. 
if you guys haven't seen the professor method yet, it's something we created that helps you just get a different mindset when you do your marketing. A lot of times when you start out, you think you need to talk about how great your business is. You need to give, you know, tell people why you're different, why you're better, but that ends up turning salesy and promotions and people aren't going to notice that. So when you go into your marketing on Google, YouTube, Facebook, ads, emails, if you turn yourself into the professor and think about yourself as the educator and the teacher, now all of your marketing that you're doing on all those channels is educating people and providing value, then they'll come to your lead magnet. So just like today, we're providing value on a podcast and on video. We're helping you with the sales funnel. I'm not telling you that we have a sale. I'm not telling you that we have a discount. I'm not telling you that we have a great product. I haven't said anything about how great Automation Links is. What I'm doing is I'm teaching you a sales funnel so you can go and try to implement it yourself. That's where you need to think is how can you educate people through your marketing? And when they're ready, they'll go click on the link to your landing page, fill out the form, and then that's where they'll end up buying. So provide value, whether it's through videos, podcasts, blogs, social media posts. And in return, once they learn from you, they know where to find your links. You don't have to tell them. Right. And with educational content, it's like you're always touching a pain point and it's not always the same one, which is great because then you're just reaching a wider audience. hundred percent. All right, Hannah, thank you for hopping on. Thank you everyone for listening and watch or watching, whether you're on a podcast, we're on YouTube as well. If you're on YouTube, we're on podcast relationship marketing podcast. And I hope this brought you a ton of value and we have some free resources in the description. Feel free to check those out, but we'll be on another episode next week. Providing value. Let's just keep educating, right? If you learn something from us, you know that's all that matters. So thanks again, Hannah. Thank you for everyone. We'll see you on the next episode.